Hello, everyone. We're going to get started here uh, in less than a minute. I'm just going to make sure everyone is in. All right. If you're ready, Morgan, I'll go ahead and, and introduce you. Yep. I'm so, ready. All right. Well, great. So hello. And this afternoon, I'd like to welcome you to OER Plug and Play, Demystifying OER for Faculty Using Brightspace. Our presenter is Morgan Bryles, a digital repository librarian at Stephen F. Austin State University. Morgan uh, joined Stephen F. Austin in early 2020. <laughs> Before making her way to East Texas, Bryles worked at B Press in Berkeley, California, and Gwinnett County Public Library in Georgia. Bryles graduated from Syracuse University's high school in 2016, and she has one cat. <laughs> um, oh, before I let you go, there's, there will be, there is captioning available. Just click on the captioning, the CC button down below and take it away, Morgan. All right. Uh, uh, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you so much um, for joining after that fantastic keynote earlier. As Ursula said, uh, my name is Morgan Bryles. I'm the digital repository librarian at Stephen F. Austin State University. Um, and I'm going to talk about a faculty outreach program that I did at SFA regarding OER uh, and how to incorporate into our current learning management system, which we use Brightspace. Um, and also assess um, some faculty attitudes um, and ask questions and get a kind of a baseline for OER attitudes at SFA. So a quick background, uh, Stephen F. Austin State University, uh, SFA for short, uh, is out in Nacogdoches, Texas, which is way far east. It's actually the purple star uh, in the logo you see on the left. Um, we're a regional comprehensive university with about 13,000 students. Um, it's usually something like 80% of those students are undergraduates. Uh, we have a few master's programs and doctoral programs, um, but SFA is more of a uh, teaching student-centered university and less of a, a big research in a, uh, university. Um, we are also one of four uh, public independent universities in Texas. So we're not part of a larger system like Texas State, even though t state is in our name. We're not part of the Texas State system. Um, and we have one library, uh, the Ralph W. Steen Library, which is host to the East Texas Research Center, Center for Digital Scholarship, our Center for Teacher and Learning, uh, Student Success Center, a really great reference department that I'm part of. Um, so uh, a little bit about me. Uh, so I joined the team here at Steen Library in January of 2020, um, moving from the San Francisco Bay Area. That's me on the left, uh, which in retrospect was really good timing to slip in uh, right before uh, COVID began. I am the co-manager of our institutional repository ScholarWorks. I'm also the music, philosophy, religious studies, um, freshman success program, and OER liaison. I manage all of our spring share applications, and I spend some time at the CERC desk. Um, so I mention all this because, uh, like many of my colleagues at Steen Library, we are spinning a lot of plates at the same time. Um, so OER is a small portion of my responsibilities, um, and in fact, it's something that I've chosen to add on uh, to my normal reference and institutional repository duties, and because it's something that I care a lot about. 
So uh, in fall 2020, that's when this workshop took place, uh, or workshop series took place. Um, and so I'll talk a little bit about the genesis of why we decided to approach faculty outreach in this way. Um, so uh, I came to SFA and I realized that the library and the university in general doesn't have a big, you know, there's not a big top level OER initiative, either from certain colleges or departments or in the library. Um, so it seemed like a good, so it didn't seem like there was much action on the OER front. Um, it's something that I've always had a lot of interest in. Uh, I've worked in the IR space and the Skullcom space for several years, so I do care a lot about open access. Um, and OER is, I think, part of the larger um, OA picture, um, though it's it's more focused on student-centered, creating student-centered resources and sources that are available for reuse. Um, so it's it's kind of a logical extension of my interests. Um, another thing is that um, this coincided with SFA's SACS re uh, renewal or SACS accreditation renewal. Um, so uh, since this is a Texas conference, um, you guys are probably have some level of familiarity with SACS, um, which is the accrediting board of the at least the four year universities in the state. And when you submit uh, your reaccreditation documentation, you have to submit something called a quality enhancement program uh, or a QEP. And this is sort of like an overarching goal that you want to focus on uh, for the next accreditation period. So, you know, six, seven years, something like that. And the QEP that the university selected was reduced student debt. And OER and no cost te textbooks, among other things, were part of, uh, were being talked about as potential aspects of the plan, um, you know, along with kind of reducing bottlenecks to course access, improving student success, um, improving graduation rates, um, things like that. Uh. And I also think that the any conversation about OER on campus, I think the library needs to have an active voice in. Um, and since there wasn't a big university level OER kind of initiative or program, I thought this was a good space for the library to assert itself as an OER leader on campus. Another impetus was the launch of the Higher Education Coordinating Board's OER text repository. So now there is a dedicated repository for Texans and Texas higher education uh, that I could, you know, point interested faculty to and promote. Um, and it also shows that the state of Texas has a great interest in being a leader. Um, and so SFA could, there's potential for SFA to uh, sort of um, catch up to speed with some of its peers in the Texas OER space. So why did we, why did I decide on a Brightspace workshop? So uh, I'm sure a lot of your institutions are in a similar boat. Um, you know, faculty and students both had to pivot to remote, I think actually exactly a year ago. <laughs> uh, it's about that time. Um, and so, you know, they're tired and stressed. We've also done some tweaking to our academic calendar here at SFA. Um, and the last thing that I wanted to do was do like, you know, a 45 minute lecture over Zoom about how, you know, they must adopt or write their own OERs if they care about their students. And if they don't, they're terrible people, um, blah, blah, blah. So I thought something that was a bit more practical and close to something that faculty already know would be better than a more kind of abstract um, lecture about why OER in general matter because I think that's that's kind of well known but like how can we apply it to our faculty at our institution. Um, so the um, the learning management system that we have as Brightspace, it's one of many, you know, Canvas, Moodle, Blackboard, those are some other examples of them. 
Um, and since the pivot to remote that happened last spring, everyone has become a lot more familiar with Brightspace, both students and instructors. Um, and like many of you, I was a librarian when the pivot happened last March. Um, and there were issues with students and instructors not having access to print resources, either as course reserves in the library, um, students that were, you know, sharing textbooks with their friends in the dorm, you know, they weren't in the dorms anymore, they couldn't have access to them. So I would say um, the interest in having a portable online resource that can be accessed from anywhere is like at an all time high, probably, um, as well as familiarity uh, with Brightspace and its Brightspace tools. Um, this also avoided introducing a new platform to instructors, faculty and students already use it. Um, students are used to finding resources there. Um, faculty are used to adding course materials there. So this was kind of a way of meeting them where they are. Um, another objective was having focusing on smaller group workshops because I wanted to ask questions and learn something from the attendees as well. So instead of a, you know, a big lecture that you invite the whole campus to, it's hard to get that, uh, that those conversations that um, were really important to me. Um, as I mentioned, uh, there hadn't been a bunch of OER activity as of late. And so I, I wanted to kind of get a, put my feelers out there, get an understanding of where people were at. Um, and also it tends to vary by, by discipline and even college, um, as you all know. So deciding to group workshops by discipline, um, I think was a good strategy to kind of get those conversations going as well as assess where different colleges and departments were at with OER. Uh, so I, in a conversation with our library director, Jonathan Helmke, we decided to have a small tailored workshop uh, with six, using six example course modules in Brightspace. Uh, so we used humanities, math, science, business, education, social si and social sciences. Um, and we split, we grouped these six example modules across three workshops. So math and science were together, humanities and social science were together, and then business and education were together. Um, so we were hoping by kind of tailoring them, A, would create smaller groups, uh, so there would be more discussion, and B, um, the faculty would feel like this was more relevant to them, and they could see OER working in Brightspace, which is a platform that they already use, and maybe feel more familiar with it um, and be more comfortable with uh, OER resources. Uh, we asked our Center for Teaching and Learning, our Brightspace coordinators, to create the six course shells for us. Um, and then uh, Jonathan Helmke and I each took three uh, modules and we found resources from the OER tax repository OpenStax, um, teaching comments, stuff that's out there, uh, you know, added textbook files, uh, quizzes, PowerPoints, um, those kinds, the ones that had ancillary materials, we tried to add those as well. Um, and we also took this opportunity while we had everyone's attention uh, to mention the library resources that we have, because those are also no cost resources that are available to students. Um, so this would be things like, you know, licensed journal articles, um, textbooks with unlimited licenses, those kinds of things, because, you know, there's not an OER for everything, but the library can still help you and get those resources at the lowest cost uh, to your students. Okay. So we came up with the name OER Plug and Play, and I have to give credit to Director Helmke. Um, that's what he'd been calling um, this kind of modern, more modern OER adoption, where you know you can take pieces from existing open educational resources uh, and then plug them into your Brightspace course, and they're there, and you're ready to go. Um, and it also, it's alliterative, it's catchy, I like it. 
Um, and as many of you know, the, the field has changed a lot, even over the last several years. So there's far more publishers, there's far more resources, there's more positions, there's more funding for OER than there were just a few years ago. Um, so just by the sheer quantity of OER and people working on it that have increased, um, it's far less likely that a faculty would need to just purely write their own open educational resource from scratch. Though, if they want to do that, we're here to help. I'd love to help you write your own chemistry 101 textbook. There's six, there's a bunch of them out there, but if you wanna make your own, we'll do it, right? Um, particularly for those core commonly transferred um, intro level courses, um, there's just a lot more out there than there was even a few years ago. So we wanted to make sure faculty understood, you don't have to reinvent the wheel. Um, you can if you want, but you don't have to. The, the second takeaway that I that we wanted our attendees to have is that these materials can be integrated into Brightspace courses like journal, like you would integrate your own PowerPoints, um, any readings you would have um, provided by the library. Uh, you can use quizzes or PowerPoints that are provided by OER publishers. You can stick them, stick them in Brightspace. Um, it's a platform you're already familiar with and your students are familiar with. Um, and we're also here to help you along with our Center for Teaching and Learning. Uh, and the third point I wanted to emphasize is that me, Morgan Bryles, is here to help you. Um, you know, I had been working at Steen Library for nine weeks before the shutdown and pivot to remote happened. Um, I didn't get a ton of face time in with faculty in that brief period. Um, and as you know, we're all still mostly meeting virtually. Um, so I wanted to use this opportunity so people could put a face to my name, um, share, you know, advertise that I'm here to help them and be friendly and approachable and that there is a library point person for OER if you're interested. Um, we hadn't really had one before, so I wanted to get myself out there as someone that they could talk to. And also that the library is here to help you with all of this stuff. Uh, so here's just a brief outline of this, the workshop. Um, the course, the image you see on the left, that's kind of what the, the example modules look like in Brightspace. Those are all like sample photos Brightspace makes and I think they're really pretty. Um, so I would begin each workshop with about a 10 minute PowerPoint presentation, just kind of explaining definitions of OER, what they are under Texas law, um, because there is a Texas legal definition. Uh, some folks might not know that um, and kind of updates on um, the legal how OER is progressing in our Texas legislature as well. Uh, we do a demo of the OER text platform to show where they could find things if just uh, to browse if they were interested. Um, then we would do an overview of the central set, uh, the sample modules, including uh, where our materials were found. Uh, how are we on time, Ursula? We have um, about seven more minutes. Okay. So you, I'll give you a, a warning when we have three okay. minutes left. Okay. Um, all right. Uh, so we're a little short on time, but I, uh, so I won't go into opening one of the modules and showing you what they look like. But if, if you're curious, you're welcome to email me and we can talk more about how those look. Um, we also had some guided discussion questions like what's your experience with OER, um, what, do, what do you think of when you think of OER, Have you? what's your biggest obstacle if you've been interested in adapting OER, um, and we got some good feedback from that as well. Uh, just a note about marketing, we did a very targeted marketing approach to this, so we emailed the, the deans of each college um, and ask their administrative assistants to send emails out to all the faculty um, listing the dates of the workshops and um, which subjects were on which days. Um, it makes the most sense to kind of target faculty specifically rather than um, 
doing a big email blast that people would just ignore. <laughs> uh, so the results, uh, we had 59 attendees across all three workshops. Um, and according to my colleagues at Steen Library, that's a phenomenal turnout. So I'm very pleased about that. Um, we had a large variety of departments, a business, marketing, economics, interior design, dietetics, history, English, math. Um, so I was really pleased with that. Um, I also sent out a post-workshop survey uh, and I got nine responses, which is more than 10%. And I've heard that that's very good uh, track record for SFA faculty too. Um, so I found, so I did find out some faculty were already using OER and were pretty happy with it. Like a good chunk of our American history faculty members have been teaching their intro level courses with the American YOP. It's not everyone, but it's, it's, it's you know, it's maybe a quarter, uh, which I was very pleased to find that out. Um, one of our math faculty, Tom Judson, he'd actually been like a math OER guy big time and I had no idea. So he had actually released his own, he wrote this abstract algebra textbook. And I think it was, uh, I think a publisher published it initially, but then when those rights expired, he bought them back or something. Um, and so now, and then he's just had it for free on the internet for years and he updates it every, I think every year or semester on his website. Um, and he's like, there's hundreds of adoptions, there's a Spanish version, um, and he's working with other math faculty in the OER space. Um, so there was a big advocate right under my nose, and I had no clue, right, until I did these workshops. Um, and so I was able to add his textbook to our repository, and it's already gotten 120 downloads in just a few months. Uh, so that's really exciting. Um, a lot of the concerns that uh, that we thought would come up did, um, you know, lack of time, um, concerns about promotion and tenure, but there was a new one that, uh, there were a few new ones we learned, um, like concerns about students having access to course material and time um, so that they could use when they take licensing or certification exams later, um, if they're not in, after they're enrolled in school. Um, and another thing that this whole workshop series was really good timing because about a week later, the the higher the higher education coordinating board announced those OER gear grants, and the provost actually asked the library to coordinate to get faculty to apply. So that was great because I already had a list of people who were very interested. Um, and so that that spawned more conversations. Um, so I've talked with the folks who teach core classes in a most in a lot of disciplines and kind of gotten and understood what their concerns and pain points are and you know we got a biology faculty to apply for the uh, adoption grant um it is it was in the last round and so i don't think we've heard back yet but um that's really exciting um so yeah that's mostly what i wanted to cover today um, but I think it was a good kind of starting point um, at our going from, you know, no OER initiatives to something. Um, you're welcome to view copies of my workshops. They're on our um, institutional repository under my name and our library faculty presentations um, series. You can check out the libguide that I made or email me with any questions. So, Morgan, that, that's great. That's so... Um interesting this project and I, and that's amazing that you were able to find someone who's already working in OER that was there um and so we probably have time for one question if somebody had a question uh if not uh here's Morgan's contact information if you wanted to follow up with her I didn't see any questions in the chat where is the link to view your info Morgan so is it the, um, could, you, could you post that in the chat? The scholar works, is, oh, is yes, that it? Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. Oh, like the, the copies of the presentations? The actual, the, the work that you, like your libguide. 
oh because yeah. mm -hmm. they are not able to click on this link right, um, right. but if you posted right. that in the chat yes i will absolutely do that that would be fantastic mm -hmm. so um i think we're we're at time okay and thank you so much yes thank you so much for presenting um what a great model and uh as remember everyone that this presentation and the slides the video will all be archived by Texas Digital Library and links to that will be sent out to all of the uh, enrolled registrants. Thank you and uh, enjoy the rest of your conference. Okay. I sent the link. Awesome. Thank you so and that much. And it has links to the presentation, the workshops too. So. Okay, great. Thank you. And um, yeah, do you uh, have any questions for me before we sign off? Hi, Gina. Hi, Mark.